What's popping? A couple videos ago, I showcased my largest attempt at a water rocket, and it seemed to garner some attention. Despite my jubilance over the fact I was able to successfully launch and recover the rocket three times, I was left kind of unimpressed with the Apogee altitude of each flight. And on top of that, the altimeter that was meant to record said Apogee altitudes refused to work on the day. So I made it my mission to seek out methods to improve the Apogee altitude of the Gamma 4. So who better to ask than George from Air Command Rockets himself? I've mentioned his and his family's work on the channel several times, but in case you don't know of his work, it's safe to say that they're the leading experts on cutting edge water rocketry. Just recently, they broke their own altitude record with their two-stage composite Horizon rocket, reaching an apogee altitude of over one and a half kilometers. I knew from watching their rocketry experiments, along with others on YouTube, that adding soap to the water to generate foam when the water is expended seems to improve the performance substantially. With this in mind, to improve the altitude performance of the Gamma 4, I would not only add soap, but also increase the air pressure to the limit of what I thought the rocket was capable of. And maybe I got a little close to that limit. Before I get into how the launch attempts went, I want to explore why the generation of foam in particular seems to improve the performance of water rockets. In short, there hasn't been enough dedicated research on the topic that explains the phenomenon conclusively. However, that doesn't mean we can't come up with some theories. After speaking with George on this topic, here are some potential reasons why foam might improve performance. Firstly, when we talk about foam, it really just means the generation of bubbles thanks to the properties of soap. With an increased amount of bubbles in the propellant as the rocket launches, the overall density of the liquid decreases. During the launch of a conventional water rocket without foam generation, approximately two-thirds of the rocket's thrust, or total impulse, is produced as the water is expelled. However, around one third of the impulse comes from the expulsion of any residual air after the water is depleted, even though it possesses a much lower density. This is because both mass and exhaust velocity are critical components of the thrust equation. This means the water phase produces substantial thrust due to the expulsion of a large amount of mass, but the air phase expulses air at a much greater velocity, allowing it to account for such a large proportion of the rocket's total impulse. So one theory suggests that since the foam generation decreases the density of the propellant, the propellant can exit the nozzle at a greater velocity, increasing thrust and overall performance. However, delving deeper into this, another interpretation could be that foam allows for a more consistent expulsion of mass throughout the flight of the rocket, meaning the line between the water phase and the air phase is blurred. This has the effect of lowering the rocket's peak velocity, instead opting for a lower peak velocity over a longer burn time. According to the drag equation, drag is inversely proportional to the velocity squared. So by decreasing the peak velocity, drag can be decreased exponentially, allowing for a more efficient flight. This is the reason behind why George developed the jet foaming spacer, a device that can be fitted inside the pressure chamber of a rocket to ensure the generation of dense foam throughout the entire burn of the rocket, essentially harnessing the properties of foam generation more so than just adding soap to the water. Regardless of which interpretation is correct, or if an entirely different theory ends up being true, more research on this topic is definitely warranted. With all of this in mind, it was time to take the Gamma 4 to New South Wales Rocketry Association's Wayland launch site west of Sydney. What's popping?
three, two, one. <laughs> And we're launching in five, four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Still some fire. Yes, Is it still on there? Yeah. It's cabaret, it doesn't fit. Like one of these. Uh, we aim at uh, 1,000 feet, and uh, we can go a bit higher and still there. So today, we're at 15, and we could go. Sorry, case point. As you can tell, those flights went pretty well, certainly exceeding the aperture altitudes of the first three flights of the Gamma 4 in the last video, even if I don't have exact values for those apogee altitudes. I do have to confess that I did leave out the actual first flight of the day. I'll let you see how that went. 100. Okay, and launch it in. Now. Mine of its own. 100. Okay, and launch it now, out of its own. Okay, and launch it. Wow, out of its own. Oh, I should have Found it. <laughs> Okay, obviously several things went quite wrong with this flight. Firstly, at 100 psi, the rocket was pressurized to a pressure that it had only experienced in a couple ground tests. So the first thing that went wrong was a premature launch caused by the nozzle completely fracturing in half. This nozzle was 3D printed and you can see how the failure follows the print lines. But not only did the rocket's nozzle fail, but as the parachute deployed, I somehow got so lucky that the parachute got caught on one of the fins literally just resting on the leading edge, preventing it from inflating, causing the rocket to pick up speed on the way down, keeping that parachute firmly on that fin before crashing. Luckily, water rockets can be inflated back to shape with a bit of pressure, and I was able to patch it back up with some tape for the next two flights. To finish up, an obvious thanks goes out to George and his family, not only for being so welcoming at my first attendance at Wayland, but also providing their equipment and expertise that made this video happen. This wouldn't have been possible without them. And a thanks goes out to you, for watching this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about soap and its effects on water rockets. I know it's also been several months since the last video, and that's mostly because I've started university which has consumed a lot of my time. But that doesn't mean I haven't been working on some really cool and substantial rocketry projects that all will be shared with you shortly. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those. Until next time, see ya!